Jesus moved up and down every road touch, every heart. He'll deliver to them. They free whatever's wrong in their lives, make it right. Find any satanic or demonic force from stopping this service from coming forward. Father, I thank you, Lord God, there's no witchcraft, no hex, no jinx, or anything that can be said over this service. Glory be to God. Father, I thank you that the power of God will flow. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. From your home into this place tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord God, people will leave here changed. They won't leave the same, Lord God, the same way they came in. God, this is a time for miracles, signs, and wonders. And a demonstration of the spirit and of his power. Not just the preaching of the word. So, Father, let it not fall upon their fears. And I thank you, Lord God, your people are ready to receive tonight. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Give God a hand clap. <laughs> Glory be to God. Praise God. We have been talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. Let's talk, start today in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's go back there real quick. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Praise God. Praise God. Y'all ready tonight? Yes. Amen. Come on. Everybody do this real quick. Hold up your Bible. Say this with me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight. Tonight. I will receive. I will receive. Incorruptible. Incorruptible. Indestructible. Indestructible. Word of God. Word of God. I'm letting every devil know. Letting every devil know that this word is alive. This word is alive. And it's ready. And it is ready for me to receive. For me to receive tonight. Tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So Acts chapter one, verse eight. Let's read that one out loud. Y'all ready? You should be there by now. I gave you no time to get there. Praise God. Acts chapter one and verse eight in the New Testament. Praise God. This is Bible study. We're gonna go through a couple of scriptures tonight. So you ready? Let's read it. One, two, three. Read. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, when the Holy Spirit, who's speaking here? Let's go back a little bit. Who's speaking here? Jesus. Have y'all ever known Jesus to speak anything in error? No. no. So when he spoke something, it was going to come to what? Pass. So he told his disciples, he says, but you're going to receive what? Power. You're going to receive what? Power. That word power means dunamis power, explosive power. I want to show you tonight what type of power that's on the inside of you. And when you begin to operate and understand what kind of power that you have on the inside of you, you would never have stinking thinking anymore. Now, this power is so powerful. Let's go over to Romans chapter 8. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Okay. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. So if you're in Acts, well, it's all right. <laughs> well, it's all right. Yeah, but we're right. Go to Acts chapter, I mean Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Watch this. You there? Didn't have to go too far. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Let's read this one out loud. Ready? Read. when the Holy Ghost comes on you and you will be my what? Witnesses. Now we see here that the scripture says that the Holy Spirit will come to make you what? A witness. But over here in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11, we see the same spirit that, that, that the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the what? He raised him from the what? So now we know how Jesus was raised from the dead. But notice he didn't stop there. That's good news. Because if Jesus was not raised from the dead, we'd still be stuck in our sins. Glory be to God. 
But because he was raised from the dead, he did not ascend into heaven and leave us hopeless. He didn't leave us without a comforter. He didn't leave us in the place where now we're stuck on this earth trying to figure out things by ourselves. Glory be to God. Thank God for pastors and preachers and teachers and all that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you, I'm glad this scripture says that the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of me. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? He said, watch this. He said, but the spirit of him raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in who? You. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also what? Quicken. Quicken. That word quicken means not to make you fast. It means to make alive. To make you alive. You see, how can the Holy Spirit make you alive? You once were dead in your sins. You were dead in your sins and trespasses against God. But it's through the, it's through the blood of Jesus that now, you're, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you receive, the, 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 you receive this regeneration where you're now born again. And now your, 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 your old spirit, man, has been kicked out. And now the Bible says, behold, all things are new. You receive a new, you're a new person in Christ Jesus by the work of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit didn't just do the work in you and he left. No, he's now dwelling on the inside of you and now you get to have a relationship with him on a daily basis. Wow. And he can quicken and make alive whatever's dead in your life. Glory be to God. If your finances are dead, he can give you wisdom on how to uh, resurrect your finances. If your marriage is dead, he can give you wisdom on how to resurrect your marriage. Glory be to God. If you're sitting there physically and you're hurting and you don't know what's next, and you're sitting there trying to go to all the doctors and all these different things, trying to figure things out, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. Uh -huh. Glory be to God. And if you don't know the person of the Holy Spirit as a Christian, you will be left to figure out things through your own experience and through your own thoughts. The Bible says my, his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. Now, let's, let's look a little bit further. Watch this, verse 12. It says, therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to the what? You, you, you don't owe the flesh anything. You don't have to live after the flesh. Now, here's what the flesh is. The flesh is, the word is socks in the Greek, in the Greek, and it means, it means it's a mindset that's opposed to the word of God. Okay? So, in other words, you get born again in your human spirit. You, you, you're born again in re, your, your reborn spirit, but now you're sitting there, the Bible says, you have to renew your what? Mind. Okay? Because the spirit, let me get uh, three people real quick. Let me get three people. One, two, three, three people, uh, three examples, all right? Or two row. Come on up. Step right on up. Go ahead, give me another person and a third person. All right, so you're going to stand here. You're going to stand in the middle, okay? All right, now, he's, she's going to be spirit. What is Teresa? Spirit. spirit. Teresa is going to be the soul, okay? He's the soul. And what's your name? The rock. Okay. You're going to be the flesh. Okay? All right. You're going to be the physical body. And let's just say this, the physical body. All right. Now, the physical body, remember, three parts make up what? One man. Okay? All right. We're, was she? Spirit. Spirit. Soul. Soul. Body. Okay. According to First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now, before you were born again, you know who was in charge? The body. Okay, the body. So I want you to turn to your left, okay? And I want you to turn to your left, okay? So when she is in charge, the body is in charge, guess who's sending the signals to the body to do what to do? The mind. Because the mind is where your emotions is, is where your will is, it's your chooser, it's your filler, it's your thinker. So in other words, you had the light right here, you turn it into the church, and all of a sudden somebody cuts you off. And guess what? Your mind has been programmed that when somebody cuts you off, you respond a certain way, right? Mm. Okay, right? And usually it's the number one finger, but you're not telling them they're number one. You understand what I'm saying? You understand? <laughs> so, right? so, 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 so you're sitting there, and all of a sudden you give them that special finger right? Where do you think that comes from? All the way coming in the reactions here, it comes from the mindset. Uh -huh. 
You see what I'm saying? The spirit, because a person is not born again, is dead. It's cut off. It, there, there's no connection there until the person gets what? Born again. All right? So now, she could be still turned that way. Now, they're at the light, and all of a sudden, now the spirit is in charge, and the spirit wants to go this way. Glory be to God. It's now it's telling, now the spirit says, oh, don't worry about that. We can pray for them, and we can forgive them. Glory be to God. Now, guess what? When the spirit is in charge, the, 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 um, the soul follows, and then guess what? The body follows as well. You can turn to your right. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You've got to let the spirit be in charge. This is where your victory will lie as long as you rely in the Spirit of God and with the Spirit of God. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Now, the Word is spiritual, John chapter 6, verse 63. So when you're reading the Word, the Word of God is what? Spiritual. Okay? Now, but the mind is where we, most of us are, where we are right now. And we're trying to decide, oh, should I do this and should I do it? Yes, because the spirit knows the way. If the spirit had enough intellect and knowledge to raise Jesus from the, the dead, dead, don't you know that he got enough intellect to lead you in your life and what you need to do? Amen. Don't you know that? But then why you want to keep following your soul and your emotions and where you've been? Well, you know, I, you know, I'm from 63rd and such and such, and you ain't from that no more. You're a new creation in what? Christ Jesus. I came from the hood, but I, I'm not in the hood no more. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you, God. Y'all get it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now, go ahead. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Let's read this now. He says, for if you live out of the flesh, you're going to live a long time. Is that what it says? No. It says you shall what? Die. He says, but if through ye through the Spirit do mortify, mortify the deeds of your body, you shall what? Live. The word mortify, you ever heard uh, 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 of a, the word mortician? Okay. Mortician. Anybody know what a mortician does? Yeah. What does a mortician do? They prepare the dead, right? So, in other words, uh, they prepare the dead. But the scripture said, if you mortify the deeds of the flesh, if you stop putting you first, we live in a you first generation. Whatever you want to do, do it. You know the number one rule in the satanic Bible? Do as you win. You can't do as you win. The number one rule in the Bible talks about Matthew 22. Let's turn there real quick. Matthew chapter 22. Let's see what Jesus said. Y'all with me so far? Yes. Am I preaching good already? Yes. All right, praise God. But we 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 building up here on a on a third on a Wednesday night. Praise God. Yes. Matthew chapter twenty two. Look what Jesus said here, and I'll get back over there to Romans. Y'all know how to. Right. Yeah, thirty seven. It said Jesus said unto him. Well, let's back thirty six. He says, Master, what is the greatest commandment in the law? He asked Jesus a law question. Do we live by the law? No. Now, under the law, we're under what? Grace. Watch this. Oh, y'all get class. Watch this. Jesus said to him, but you shall love the, thy God with all thy what? Heart. With all your soul and with all your mind. Mm -hmm. All right. This is the first and great what? Command. The second is like this. You shall love thy neighbor as thy what? And on these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. So if Satan's Bible says you can do as you will, God saying in his word, the law is saying that you got to love God with everything that you have. Everything that you have. Everything that you have. Every part of your being. Even the part that you don't want to give unto him yet. That, that secret thing that you hold it on in the dark that you don't want nobody else to know about, you're going to have to give that up, right? You're going to have to give that thing up, bro. I'm telling you right now. You're going to have to give it up. Because guess what? If, if God saved you, he's called you into this, this, this walk into this grace of life, you're going to have to now uh, take up your cross and follow him. That's what he said. He wanted, you have to love your neighbor as you love what? Yourself. He didn't say love yourself first. He said love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, sure, all y'all, before y'all got here tonight, y'all all looked in the mirror because y'all all looking good to praise God. Right? And you all looked at yourself when you came here because you didn't want nobody to talk about you with no side eye when you, when you came in. Am I right about it? You checked your eye, you checked all these different things. 
So you love yourself enough to check yourself in the mirror, right? And you love yourself enough to, before you walked in here and you say, you know what? Some of y'all probably looked in the mirror a little long and said, why are you sure looking good tonight? I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But here's what it did. If you love yourself that much, can you love someone else that much? Can you love somebody else that much? See, the calling card of the Christian is not just to walk in power, but it's to walk in I know what he said. Let's go back over here to Romans chapter 8, verse. Let me show you this. Word. Praise God. Y'all get anything out of this so far? Yeah, sure, yeah. Romans chapter 8. Let's go back over here real quick. And I'm going to share this and we get to the PowerPoint. Now watch what he says. He says, for as many, verse 14, he says, for as many now are as what? Led by the Spirit of God. They are the what? Sons of God. Okay, now wait a minute. Your sonship is not just based on you being born again. You receive salvation. You received grace. But now all of a sudden, it's saying you got to be led by the who? Big S. Holy Spirit. If you're not led by the Holy Spirit, you need to get your life and get your house in order right now. Take an inventory of your life. Who's leading you in your life? Is it the Holy Spirit? Or is it your spirit? Or is it your culture? Or is it your upbringing? Or is it whatever you think in your mind, your experiences? You want to let all that go. Glory be to God. And you will now have to be led by who? The Spirit of God. Now remember, he led Jesus to the cross. But he also led Jesus to the what? Exaltation. Ah. To be raised up. Glory be to God. Jesus died to himself. But he's been given a name that's been exalted above every other name that's named. So you're going to have to die to yourself. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Boy, boy, that's good preaching, Kurt. I'll tell you that's good. <laughs> All right. He says, well, if you many is lit. Listen, this is not just for preachers. This is not just for those that grew up in church. He says, for as many, he's inviting everybody to come in and receive the Holy Spirit. He's inviting you tonight, glory be to God, to get to know him a little bit more, glory be to God. Some of you, you're new to this and you're new to Christianity and you're trying to figure it all out, but you don't have to look too far because the Holy Ghost is on what? The inside of you. Just got to get to know him. Watch this in Luke chapter 11. Watch this, watch this. Who go? Man, I'm fired up. Luke chapter 11. You might say, well, that sounds good. But I don't know if I have the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Luke chapter 9. In fact, Luke chapter 11 and verse 9. And it says, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be what? Given, Given unto you. Everybody knows this scripture. Because all y'all ask for all kinds of different things. He says, seek and you shall what? Find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh what? Receive him. And he that seeketh what? Find him. And to him that knocketh it shall be what? There ain't no excuse in your life. There's no excuse in your life. You can ask, you can seek, and you can knock. You understand what I'm saying? You can ask. Somebody say ask. ask. Seek. seek. And knock. knock. You can ask. Say it again. Ask. ask. See? See? And now, if you don't know what to do in your life, ask. Ask God. God, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? But if you ask him a question, doesn't he now obligate it to answer the question? But you've got to give him a season, a time to, for him to respond. So that may mean that you're going to have to start spending quality time with him. You understand what I'm saying? Where you stop spending so much quantity time with other things. Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm going to go this side. Come Maybe on. you need to start spending quality time <laughs> with him mm -hmm. and not spending quantity time with things that, uh, that, that, that distract you, that pull you away from God, that, 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 that make you question and doubt whether God is good to you and makes you feel like this is just another religious service. No, you need to ask God and spend time with him. You understand what I'm saying? Give you an example. Okay? So when me, me and my wife, <clears throat> I proposed to my wife. She came to my hometown and I took her to mom. 
okay? Single men, all right? And then and single men here, if, if you're looking to get married, take off, if your mom's still alive, take her home to your mom, okay? The mama's no best, all right? Boy, y'all sure got quiet. This Presbyterian church right there. I'm in mean, well, I'm stepping on some toes. But see, I had been married before, and I didn't want to make the mistake of going through another divorce. So the first marriage, I didn't ask mama nothing. I just came home and said, here she is. You know, when she left, my mom said, I never did like that girl. I was like, why you say that to <laughs> She was never no good for you. So this time I said, no, nah, we're going to take her down there. She's going to meet Mrs. Lee before she becomes Mrs. Lee. And you understand what I'm saying? So I took her down there, and my mom said, within seconds, she pulled me to the back. She said, boy, that's the best girl you ever brought in this house. I said, wow. So you know what I did? Within an hour, we were down at the beach, Gulf Shores, Alabama. I got down on one knee, and I asked her to marry me. But when I asked her to marry me, I didn't just assume that she was going to say yes. I knew she was going to say yes. She was down there anyway. anyway. But, but I waited to hear her what? Her response. Because she could have said no. I, I don't know how she got back to. <laughs> I don't know how she got back to. Scared. But I waited for her what? Response. Because I asked her a question that was so important that I needed to know what she said. Because out of her heart was going to flow the issues of life. And so when she said yes, and she had this big old smile on her face, and I saw her heart, she, her, her, you know, she's red, so her, her cheeks were red and rosy and everything, and I said, praise God. That was confirmation. And we've been married ever since then, 13 years. Praise God. Going back to the scripture of what if I didn't what? Ask. ask. What if I didn't ask? You see, and, and, and that, even in that equation that I'm talking about, even in that story I'm talking about, I had to seek God on what God wanted me to do as far as marriage. And if, as I sought him, I began to stop seeking what I was seeking before. You're talking about looking for love in all the wrong places. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? But, and then all of a sudden I had to turn that off and I had to turn on the word of God. And I began to look in the word of God. And as I began to look in the word of God, I began to, because I'm a speaking spirit, glory be to God. I began to speak what God said in his word, glory be to God. And I'm another speaking spirit. So I began to frame my world, glory be to God. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to frame your world with the word of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? Come on. And now when you got this thing, now you, you, you asked, you saw God, now you start knocking. Boom, 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 boom. You got to, see, see, we were never meant to stay stagnant as Christians. We were meant to uh-huh. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What if we would just stay there at Gulf Shores and just try to relive that moment over and over and over again? In fact, that day when I, I, I y'all ever seen the movie, what was that, Jim Carrey, uh, what was that, and he pulled the sun or the moon in like that, y'all remember? Bruce Almighty, right? Well, that day, uh, I did the same thing. I, there was a moon that was Basically. right there, and so I just sat there on one knee and I was pulling the moon in, and it was right there. I'm just joking. I <laughs> but it was like that, and that it was a beautiful Starry night in Alabama. But I say that to say, we could try to relive that moment over and over and over again. But maybe God put us together to do more than just have an experience. He called <laughs> Maybe he put us together so we can have more than an experience. Maybe we should be asking and seeking and knocking and seeing what God has for us instead of staying in one place like so many Christians do and get stuck and not being led by the Spirit of God. God speaks to us and says, hey, get out of this city. He spoke to me, really. He said, get out of Alabama and get to Oklahoma. And I said, okay. To my wife, I said, babe, we gotta get out of here. We gotta go to 
to another city. She looked at me and said, what? We just got in this house. I said, no, God is calling us to another city. God's calling us to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we need to get there fast, quick and in the hurry. Like my sister just said, praise God. We need to get there quick. So what happened is later, maybe about six to eight months, it was about six months maybe, perhaps, and we were here in Oklahoma. But you know what? We got here. We was we were seeking God, but we were knocking. We were knocking. We were, see, when you start knocking, you're hungry. You understand what I'm saying? See, the young lions, uh, uh, if, you want, if you're hungry for, for God, God for your life, you're going to start knocking on every door till you can get in that thing. You understand what I'm saying? The just shall live by what? Faith. Glory be to God. Now, what does it have to do with my message? Absolutely nothing. But I'm telling you right now, God is growing. Praise God. Y'all get something out of this. There we were. God says, you need to start this church. We were here three years. No, two and a half years. Two years. God said, you need to start this church now. I had no resources. No people. They tell you as a church planner, you should have at least $100,000 in the bank. Well, I didn't have $100,000 in the bank. I don't even know we had $1,000 in the bank when God said, dude, praise God. You understand what I'm saying? We were basically living from check to check. Praise God. But God said, you need to get started. And as soon as we took a step, we started knocking. Glory be to God. The resources started to come our way. Of course, many is led by the Spirit. And as you're sitting in this church right now, do you think that if God brought me to that moment in my life, do you think he's going to fail me now? Praise God. No, no he's not. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, he's not. Because he said, I shall receive what? Power. Power. I've got to be a witness in this community because I bear and I, die. I house the presence of God on the inside of me. And God will never leave me. He will never forsake me. And he will never see me be put to what? Shame. All right, let me get back. Y'all ready for it? <laughs> Y'all get anything out of that? Yes. All right, so now watch this. John chapter 7, verse 38. Praise God. What, notice what he says here. Let's read this out loud. Ready? Read. Out of his heart shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Right now on the inside of you, you have rivers. And most of you in your mindset, you think of rivers. And don't be confused by what you see out there under the bridge over there at the Arkansas River. That's not what God's talking about. Look at those rivers right there. You yeah. see how they're abundantly flowing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this too. Don't let what you see right now stop you from believing what God is about to do. Your right now is not going to be what God has you next. You better stay with God. You better connect with the Holy Ghost because your next is about to blow your mind. I speak that over your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. But you don't have to get close to the Holy Ghost because out of your belly shall flow. 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 Get ready to flow. Get ready to flow in the Holy Ghost. Get ready to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Get ready to flow in the fruit of the Spirit. Get ready to flow wherever God sends you. Oh, glory be to God. Now get ready to flow. Let God just use you. Glory be to God. Watch what he says here. Look at this right here. This is what I'm talking about right here. This is what y'all know what this place is, right? Huh? Grow up the street. That's what some of y'all look like in the Spirit right now. You dry. You dry. You, you sitting there dry, and you know what you're waiting on? you waiting on somebody to come pour in your cup so you can begin to pour. But he said, he didn't say that out of your belly shall come. Or, or no, he didn't say, where the source of the living water was come? It was going to come from within, not from without. Yeah. Oh, you don't need me to follow you home and then come home and then start preaching to you at 3 o'clock in the morning. You understand what I'm saying? You need the voice of the Holy Ghost to come on and begin the relationship with him and allow him to, to get in this near relationship with him where he begin to fellowship with him. Glory be to God. No matter what that looks like, glory be to God. And you begin to let him talk to you. You have this exchange, glory be to God, because he wants to speak. How can he lead if he doesn't what? Speak. Let me go back to this picture here. This is how you watch this. It's a river versus a lake. 
The river is a flowing body of water. It's a flowing body. It goes from one place to somewhere else. It's never stagnant. It's never still. It's always flowing. It has the ability to be used by God in any situation at any time. There was this guy, Philip, in the book of Acts. Philip. The first time we hear of Philip in the book of Acts, we hear of them having a problem in the book of Acts. And all of a sudden, they decided, the apostles decided that they were going to assign seven people, seven people to handle the task. Let's look at the requirements of what they asked for those seven people. Y'all want to see it real quick? All right, go to Acts chapter 6. Y'all getting something out of this? Oh, my God, really? All right, Acts chapter 6. <laughs> Praise God. Acts chapter 6, look at this, in verse 1, it says, in those days when the number of disciples was multiplied. You see, when you have people, you're going to have what? Problems. You have a bunch of people from all over the place. If they're not in unity and they come from all different walks of life with all different type of mindsets, they're going to have problems. But the Spirit knows the exact answer how to stop those problems. Glory be to God. Now watch this. He said, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. These are all believers. Because the widows were neglected in daily administration. Then the twelve called a multitude of disciples under them, saying, it's not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve what? Tables. Wherefore, brethren, look out among you for how many men? Seven. How many men? Seven. How many men? Seven. Number of completion. Of honest report and full of what? Now, how they don't know they're full of the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Spirit is what? He's a spirit. So how they don't know they're full of the Holy Ghost? Because we're going to have to see something. See, the whole earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Going back to Romans 8 and chapter 14, he said, For as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? Uh, all right, so we're going to know if you're a son of God, if you let the Spirit lead your life. You're going to be full of the Holy Ghost. We're going to see what you're full of. We're going to see what you're full of by your actions. Here's Philip. He's full of the Holy Ghost. Well, he didn't say his name. Let me back up. He says, and he's full of the Holy Ghost and what? Wisdom. That we may appoint over this what? Business, verse 3. But he said, we're going to give ourselves continually to what? Prayer and the ministry of the word. So that's what the apostles did. So the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose who? All right, a man full of faith and full of Holy Ghost. Who's the second person there? Philip. Philip. All right, you read all the rest of it you want to. Uh, uh, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas, and the proselyte of Antioch. Now, let's go over to chapter 8. Watch this. Now, we see Philip, full of the Holy Ghost, serving what? Tables. Being in the house of God, serving in the ministry. You can be full of the Holy Ghost doing anything. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You don't have to be full of the Holy Ghost up here preaching. You can be full of the Holy Ghost where you are right now and make an impact. In fact, your job is your assignment. If you're looking for more responsibilities in the realm of the Spirit, you're going to have to take care of the domain that you're in right now by having a dominion mindset that when you get in there, you're full of the Holy Ghost. Notice he said they were full of the Holy Ghost and with what? Wisdom. I pray that you have the wisdom of Ishakar and know what to do in the time like this. You see, wisdom is the ability to do anything and get results in your life. You need the wisdom of God. And watch this, last chapter 8, let's go over here. Now. He says, and Saul was consenting unto, verse 1, and Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. And watch this, verse 4, and it says, and therefore they that scattered abroad went everywhere preaching what? The word. They went everywhere preaching what? The word. Did they say that they were called to the ministry, did those that were preaching the word? So you called to preach the word too. All right? Don't look for the pulpit to preach the word. People around you need to hear the word of God. Verse 5, watch this. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached who? Christ unto them. You see that, right? 
Now wait a minute, now wait a minute. How did, how did, how did Philip go from serving tables to now he was faithful in one season and now God has promoted him in the next season. He's in Samaria preaching Christ to a whole city. You see, don't underestimate what God has you at right now. It's preparation for what God. If you could be faithful in the little things, God will make you faithful in what much. Oh, man, y'all missing a good place Amen. to shop. Because you know what? We don't like the process. We want it to be, amen, I ask, and there it is. We want it right here, right now. Uh, you want a microwave mentality where if I ask for it, I get it right now. Listen, I asked Ben, listen, I came to this city 20 years ago, and I asked God for, for all the things that I'm doing right now, and God took me on a 20-year journey. 20-year journey. It's a process. And you know what I did? I started to love the process. I go to the gym every day, and I love going to the gym. Why? Because I love the process of being in the gym. I do not marry to the results. I'm married to the process. Hallelujah. Because when you're married to the process, you're going to develop habits that take you to your destiny. Glory be to God. So every day, Philip, he probably showed up. The first one that look, Philip showed up, he said, what needs to be done today? Well, I'll do this. I'll pick up this. I'll do this. I'll do that. I still do that to this day. When, I still, when I'm even at work, I see somewhere, I see trash uh, uh, in, in my job or somewhere, I pick it up. Because that's one of the first things I did at church. I still have that mindset. I'm a servant. Now watch this. So Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and he preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he would. Who do you think was leading Philip? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Wow. Nobody saw his potential when he was serving tables, but God did. And God was preparing him for what he had him to do. I'm preaching to somebody. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. Somebody here needs to hear that tonight. Because you're looking at where you are as insignificant, as, as, as no, as, as nothing. It means, it feel like it means nothing to anybody else. You, you're sharing things on social media. Nobody's checking for you in this season. That's okay. Some of you are, are, are authors. You need to write a book. And you, and you wrote the book or you, you started the book and nobody, you, you couldn't get anybody to even read the book. That's okay. You're in the season of preparation. The story, your story of your life is still being written. Amen. There's still time. And the scripture says time and chance happen to them all. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Now, but you're going to have to be a river. You're going to have to let God flow to you. What if Philip was like a lake where he was just a standing body of water? He could have been like those disciples that were there. They, they only called out seven of them. That was in that time in Acts 6. They didn't call out anybody else, but he decided to flow wherever the need was. That's what we need in this house. Wherever there's a need, I need you to jump in. Glory be to God. Don't wait, sit back, and say, well, I wonder why they ain't doing it. We need you. Praise God. Get involved. Praise God. Let me get back to you. <laughs> A lake is a standing body of water. It, it doesn't connect to anything else. As a river, God will connect you to other people that you needed to be connected with. As, as Philip was ready to flow, God led him into the place where he could be fruitful. See, the scripture says, what does it say in Genesis? Be fruitful and what? Multiply. We're supposed to be taken over as Christians. All right, let's go a little bit further. Praise God. Let's look at this. John 14, verse 12. It says, notice what Jesus said here. He says, verily, truly, I tell you, whoever or whosoever in the King James, uh, James Bible, it says, whosoever believes in me. Are there any believers in this room tonight by a show of hands? You'll believe. Okay. So notice this scripture is talking to who? You. He says, whosoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. And they will do even greater works than these. Notice why he's anointing you at this moment. Because he's going where? To the Father. And remember he said the Holy Spirit's come to make you what? 
a witness that God is still here in this earth. So it's time for us to get busy. All right, now, let's go a little further. We've been talking about the gifts of the Spirit, so we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 real quick for the time we have left. We've got 10 minutes, and I get you out of here. I promise you, I get you out of here in 10 minutes. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Y'all getting something out of this tonight? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you be what? Ignorant or unlearned. Okay? Or unlearned. He doesn't want you to be unlearned or that to the place that you don't know something, you don't have knowledge. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to what? Every man to profit with all. Now, question. Does every person have the Holy Ghost? No. no. So he's talking to who? The body of Christ. So if you got the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit's been given to you to do what? Profit other people. And not only profit yourself. So now you're going to have to, what? Get to know the Holy Spirit to understand how you can flow with him. Oh, that's good teaching. All right, now watch this, what he says. Verse 8 through 10. I'll put it on the board in case you're not there. All right, so he says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of what? Wisdom. To another, the word of what? Knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirit. To another, a diverse kind of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But the, all these work of that one and self same spirit, dividing to every who? Man, severally as he what? With. This is what you have on the inside of you. When's the last time you went to church and you heard about the power that you possess on the inside of you? Again, you're looking like that lake out there in Arkansas. You're waiting for somebody to come pour you, and you already got the power. Demons and people in the darkness are hoping that you are ignorant to what I'm telling you tonight because they can still operate in this earth if you don't know who you are. Not anymore. Praise God. Especially in this house, praise Amen. God. Amen. Now, we've been talking about the first week, we talked about the three revelation gifts. The gifts that reveal something. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. We talked about last week uh, two of the power gifts, the gift of faith and the work of the miracles. Tonight we're going to talk about the gifts of healing. And the next week we're going to talk about the last three, which is the three other events, our, our inspirational gifts, the gifts that say something. All right, so now let's look over here. At the gifts of him. Okay? The gifts of him. I'm gonna show you a story about the gifts of healing, and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna talk about it. So let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 5. Actually, let's go to the book of Mark. Let me show you this the book of Mark. Mark chapter 5. Now I want you to know that the gifts of healing, first of all, as a believer, you have the right to be healed, okay? As a believer, you have the right to be healed. You, there are bill of rights as a believer, and as a believer, you have the right to be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Anytime you experience any sickness or disease in your body, you have a right because you are a heavenly citizen to go to heaven and heaven to move on your back. If you have sickness and disease in your body that is an illegal intruder on the inside of you. And you can use the word of God to remove that illegal intruder of sickness and disease off your physical body. But I'm preaching better than you saying amen. <laughs> amen. Fact. Let's let's segue. Let me show you this real quick. Cause some of y'all look like a deer in headlights. Let me go back a little bit. Let me show you this. First Peter chapter two, 20, verse twenty-four. It says, "He himself bore our what?" Okay, it's clearly on the board. He himself bore our what? Sin. All right, you don't have to look for it it's right there. He himself bore our what? Sin. Now you believe as a believer. You believe as a believer that what all your sins have been forgiven. Don't you believe that? Yeah. You argue somebody that I ain't the same person I used to be no more. I've been. You say that to everybody. Mm -hmm. 
But notice what the scripture says. Keep reading. Notice what it says. But he bore his sins in his body on the what? Cross. So that we might die to what? See, there's a part. You're going to have to die to sins, though. And live for what? Righteousness. And by his wounds you have been what? Healed. I'm talking about physical. In this realm, you can be healed emotionally, physically. Every trauma that you've gone through as a child, you can be healed from. All you got to do is partake of it. It's there. It's yours. You don't have to run from it. You don't have to run to the altar week by week. You don't have to run to the altar all the time. You don't have to get try to catch a meet with me all the time. You can run to the scripture and say this word, by his wounds I am healed. Amen. Right, right. Say that right now. By his wounds, by his wounds I, am I am healed. healed. Amen. See, something happened when I say it, but something happened when you say it. You have a right to, to be healed. Glory be to God. Notice what he said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 26. And he answered and said, it's not good to take the what? Children's bread and throw it to the what? Dogs. But she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Now, what happened here? There was a lady that needed healing. Right? Healing at the time was only given to the Jews. And here's what Jesus said. He called it the children's what? Bread. So that tells you that healing belongs to who? You. Are you a child of God? Yeah. Yeah. Are you a child of God? Yeah. You should say that loud enough to the people out there, the, the people in the back. You know, there's people out there in the back, right? They be out there t hanging out. We're going to invite them in one day. They should hear y'all in here, praise God. Y'all got something different on the inside of you. Amen. This is good news. If this is good news, is saying that healing belongs to you. Yeah. I'm not talking about healing where you go to the doctor and they give you med prescribe you medicine for you to be healed. I'm talking about supernatural healing belongs to you. That's your DNA. That's your covenant that you have with God. Now, God watches over his what? Word to perform. All he's looking for you to get in faith with his word, and guess what? Boom, he moves on your behalf. Watch this, Mark 16. Now, the common thing with the believer is they, they always run into a place where they're trying to be healed when actually you're supposed to be a source of healing for others. Watch this, what he said. This is what Jesus said, Mark 16, verse 20. It says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to who? All creation. Y'all, there's on the board. You can look right there, Mark 16, verse 15 through 20. And he says, and he who has believed, any believers in this house tonight? Yes, sir. And has been baptized shall be what? Saved. But he has that doesn't believe shall be what? Condemned. And these signs shall accompany those who what? Believe. In my name you shall cast out what? Demons. Woo. And they shall speak with new what? Tongues. And they shall pick up serpents and drink. If they drink anything deadly or poison, it shall not hurt them. Watch this. But they shall lay hands on the what? Sick. And they shall what? Put your hands in front of you right now. Speak to those hands. Say, hands, hands. you are created, you are created. By, God. by God to lay hands, to lay hands. On, the on the sick, and they will, and they will. Recover. recover in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. See, I'm, at this church, we're building you up to be an army. We're building you up to be an army. We, we, we're not going to be no, no pacified Christians just coming in to get a neat little message that we go out. I'm raising you up to follow the mission and vision from heaven. We are on an assignment, glory be to God. We're on this earth for a reason. And I'm telling you, I've seen God use my hands just as a believer, not as a pastor, as a believer, laying hands on people and the sick recover. That's his word, y'all. That's what he has promised. Do you believe that? Yes, yes. Glory be to God. Number two, God will place you in situations where his healing power will flow. Now, let's go over here to Mark chapter 5. I think that's where we were. 
Mark chapter 5, verse 24 to 29. Now watch, please. Now the gifts of healing are supernatural healing of sickness and disease without any natural source or means. It has nothing to do with medical science. It has nothing to do with human learning. It can come on by the laying of hands. It can come on with the anointing of oil. It can come on with the speaking of the word of God. It can just come on and all of a sudden, all of a sudden healing just flows. And we're going to watch two stories tonight and I got you out of here tonight. Watch this. Its purpose though is to destroy the works of the devil in the life of a person. Its purpose is to destroy the works of the devil in the life of a person. You see, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it what? More abundantly. And out of that life, remember, out of that life, out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers. God's causing people to flow to you. I'm telling you, he's causing people to flow to you this season. Get your mind off of how God's going to do stuff in your life and get your mind on the mission and vision of what God is saying and what God's telling you to do. Well, I can't say nothing right now because I'm hurting. Listen, well, get your mind off of what you're hurting and who hurt you and get your mind on God because the scripture says, we said Sunday, he said he keeps, those that keep his mind on him, we will keep in what? Perfect peace. Watch this. Here, watch this story right here. So a large crowd followed and pressed around Jesus. There was this woman who came up. She had been subject to bleed for how long? Too long. That's what somebody said. It's too long. Too long. She had been bleeding for 12 years. Some of y'all have been bleeding for 12 years. Some of y'all have been hurting for years because somebody left you. Somebody said something about your life. And you've been bleeding on everybody else. Every person you come around, you're telling them the same story over and over and over again. And God can't flow because you're like this leak. You won't allow him to flow because you keep holding and bottling up that pain. And God says you need to let it go. You need to press. You need to. He says one thing Paul said. He said, I forget those things which are behind me and I press towards the mark that's in front of me. That's where that flow is. So this woman, obviously for 12 years, she had been seeking solutions, been seeking answers. Notice what the scripture says. She had suffered a great deal of the care of many what? Doctors. And had spent all she had. She spent everything she had. And many times at the place where you are at a place of brokenness is where healing can begin. When you stop looking for other solutions, is where the healing can start. Glory be to God. Are you hungry for miracles? Yeah. Are you hungry for change? Yeah. You see, I was so hungry for change that I had to put everything behind me and I started going towards God. Mm -hmm. Watch this what happens. Because she did that, yet instead of getting better, she grew up worse. But she heard about who? Jesus. She heard about who? Jesus. She heard about who? Jesus. Say it again. She heard about who? Jesus. Have you heard about Jesus? Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Scripture says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and what? <laughs> she came up behind him in the crowd and she touched his cloak. And because she thought, she says, if I just can touch his cloak, I will be here. And immediately, her bleeding what? Stop. Stop. Wait a minute, it's been flowing for 12 years. It's been flowing for 12 years. Online, it's been flowing for 12 years. And all of a sudden, one encounter with God, the thing stopped. And she was, the scripture says, she was freed from her what? Suffering. Mm -hmm. Tonight, you're getting free tonight from your suffering. Amen. Amen. You're getting free from your suffering tonight. I prophesy that over you because tonight you're going to meet a man named Jesus. And he's here to heal you. And then all of a sudden, he's going to take you and he's going to, he's going to send you as, as a believer into the world to heal others. Listen, listen, you know what happened with her story? She walked away from that thing and now she had a testimony that nobody could deny. All right. Your testimony that nobody can deny. I'm telling you, they, they can't deny what God has done for you. I, I, am I talking to somebody in the room? Has God done something for anybody in this room? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, glory. Amen. 
this gift of healing began to flow. What did Jesus do anything in this? In this? Yeah, that's what I want to get to this. Did Jesus do anything? No. Didn't say he did anything. The gift of the healing flows by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. It just flows with the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. See, right now, God's healing things in this room. Without, without me having to touch you, mm -hmm. God's healing something. Mm -hmm. Something supernatural is happening. Mm -hmm. That's why we talk about the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at this in Acts chapter 5. I'll let you go. Watch this. Verse 14. It says, In all the more believers in the Lord, multitudes of men and women were constantly added to their number. To such an extent that they even carried the who into the street? They carried the who in the streets? The sick. They carried the sick into the what? Streets. And what are they going to do when they get there? They laid them out. They said they laid them on cots and pallets. Mm -hmm. So then when now here's Peter. What did Peter do? Peter didn't have the oil in his hand. Peter didn't go out there and lay hands on every person. The Bible says that Peter came and by at the least his shadow. His shadow might fall on one of them. And look at verse 16 in that verse. And it says, and watch what it says. Because uh, you can't just leave it there, Pastor. What happened next? The shadow passed by what? What happened? And he says, there also came out of multitude cities round about Jerusalem bringing what? Sick folks. And them that were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed what? Every one of them. That's the kind of power that you have on the inside of you. You see, the church has not been void of power. It's been void of speech and void of understanding. And once you understand what you have on the inside of you, you're not going to live average anymore. Everybody put your hand on your belly real quick. Close your eyes and Say this with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I am a child of God. I repent of my sins. And I live for you. I believe you died and you rose for me. And you're sitting on the right hand of the Father. And today, I receive your Holy Spirit. And out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Lord, use me. Here I am. Send me. In Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. Stand to your feet. Come on. Did y'all get anything out of tonight? Praise God. God, that, that was powerful tonight. Because we learned about the gifts of healing. There's so many more scriptures that I could have went through tonight. But due to time constraints, I'm going to leave you with that. Did y'all get anything out of that tonight? Yeah. This is one you have to go back and watch over and over again. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? As she said, the lady said, the, the, the woman with the issue of blood, she heard of what? Jesus. Mm -hmm. So tonight, faith was sown into your life. Mm -hmm. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Yeah. I, I want you to go back and listen to this one at least twice mm -hmm. before Sunday. Okay? Listen to it twice.